If you look at the underside of a leaf with a microscope, you'll see teeny tiny holes called stomata. These are what allow transpiration to take place. And today, that's the process we're learning about. A great way to improve your understanding and boost your grades is with my study along workbooks. These are specifically made to use alongside my videos and contain loads of tasks and exam questions. By downloading them, you support me in continuing to make these videos. Get yours now from emmatheteachy.com. Plants require carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. This comes from the air around them and enters the leaves through small pores called stomata. These can be open, like this one which shows the stoma, which is a singular of stomata, or they can be closed so you can't see it. This opening and closing is controlled by the guard cells, which are found on either side of the stomata here. In this diagram, the guard cells are turgid. That means they're full of water and this gives them this particular shape that causes the stoma to open. When the guard cells lose water, they become flaccid and their shape becomes more rectangular, which closes the stoma. The guard cells control gas exchange. When the stomata are open, carbon dioxide diffuses into the leaf, where it's then used for photosynthesis. Oxygen is produced in this process, and it will then diffuse out of the leaf, at least the excess that isn't needed for respiration. Unfortunately, water vapor is also able to escape through these open pores. Let's take a look at this in more detail. Water evaporates from the surface of cells in the air spaces of the spongy mesophyll. When it evaporates, it turns into water vapor, and this water vapor then leaves through the stomata. This process of water loss through the stomata is called transpiration. That's a key word to learn. Now let's look at the effect it has. The orange arrows show the path of water through the plant. Water is getting pulled up through the xylem, through the stem and the leaves, to replace the lost water, so more water will need to be taken up by the roots in the process of osmosis. This movement of water through the whole plant is referred to as the transpiration stream. It's important to remember that transpiration is driven by the evaporation of water in the leaves. Okay, let's test what you've learnt. Pause the video and try these quick questions, and then press play when you're ready to mark them. Ready? 1. What is the function of guard cells? These open and close the stomata, controlling gas exchange and water loss. 2. During the day, many potassium ions enter the guard cells. Explain how this helps the plant carry out photosynthesis. And this is a link to topic 1, cell biology. So that's a bit of a hint, but we'll come back to that in a moment. And first we'll look at how this affects the cells. So we've got many potassium ions and they are entering the cells. This means that there's going to be a high concentration of potassium ions in the cell and left outside, we're going to have a lower concentration of potassium ions. Let's put that in a sentence first. If many potassium ions enter the guard cells, it increases their concentration inside the cell, making it higher than outside the guard cells. Now let's think about the impact of this. If we have a lot of potassium ions, or solute ions, inside the cell, that's going to affect the movement of water. And water moves by osmosis. That's our link to topic one. So here are our water molecules. We can see that there's a low concentration of solute outside the cell, so water is going to move inside the cell to where there's a higher concentration of the solute, which is just potassium. So water will move by osmosis from the area of lower solute or potassium ion concentration outside the cell to the area of higher potassium ion concentration inside the cell. There's another way to phrase this. You can also discuss the concentration of water and say that it will move from where there's a high concentration of water to where there is a low concentration of water inside the cell. Now let's explain how this helps a plant carry out photosynthesis. This movement of water into the guard cells causes them to change shape, 
opening the stomata. This then allows carbon dioxide to diffuse into the leaf where it is used for photosynthesis. That was definitely a hard question, so a massive well done if you got that right. Learn more about factors affecting transpiration over here. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click the icon here or the big red button down below. Thanks for watching and bye.